Next. However, again, this is Seth in a vacuum. The Seth material I do not consider complete. And, and a glaring omission when you start to look at the world's traditions is the chakra and subtle energy bodies. There's next to no mention. He mentions the three astral bodies in Seth dreams and projections of consciousness or projection. It's had two different titles over the years. Also dealing with the shadow. And this is a, an authentic contribution of Freud and Jung and the, and the developmental psychology uh, lineages. Seth is weak in a sense. He doesn't focus on that part. However, if you take it to heart and you've really done the practices and the exercises over the years, you're dealing with your shadow projections and your issues. Mary was talking about that yesterday in her own way, her fear head and the, uh, the clone, the other, uh, you know, it's my issue, it's my shadow, and I will project it on you, and we can, you know, shadow box, and then if I haven't resolved the issue myself, then you will come up. And it's still there. It's all about me. And Seth is pointing at that, but he didn't articulate it. And it's something that this integral material does part, uh, articulate. And I think it's very important to help us all get along a little better than sometimes we do. And further, it, it hints but doesn't focus on non-dual formulas, shunyata, emptiness, the highest realization in all the traditions. And, and there's an interesting whole interesting bunch of stuff there, but I don't have time to go into that today. And then, but it's important because the Seth material is a critical foundation, and it's being continued, in my view, in my research, in the Elias material and the Chris Chronicles, among others. And the metrics that I'm developing for that are the types of depth. I, I'm pulling out a map of the Seth material, and then I compare it, and I see where, those, where there's hits. And I have uh, an e-book for sale in the back of the room, in the table back there, it's a, a CD-ROM version of an essay that I published in 2001 and presented at the 2001 New World View Conference. And it was controversial because here we have a very Sethian group, and Seth is our, our root guru, number one. How could anybody dare do anything as good or better? But the, the, point I, the question I asked at that time, and I still ask to this group, what if another source, another channeling phenomenon, or another creative individual, focused personality, comes along who somehow manages to expand the Seth, what we can call the Seth material. Is that possible? I believe it's so. I make my case, my argument in, in this. Uh, there's also a second ebook. It's just a four-page outline. I haven't had time to flesh it out yet. That shows the Chris Chronicles in relation. And I've spent three years studying that material. And there's just startling connections to the depth of the Seth material. So there's a larger pattern emerging here. This is not to diminish our beloved Seth. Do not ever get me wrong. I cut my teeth on Seth. I will live and breathe Jane and Rob and, and all of the books and all the imagery. However, I know there's more. There's, there's a bigger pattern going on here. And it's important we keep that in mind as we go forward. I mentioned that. Oh, yes, the, the thing about the ebook, it's in PDF, Word, and HTML format. So you can print out a lovely formatted 50 page version of it yourself. I, I don't want to sell those anymore. It's easier to produce them on, on the ebook format. But th the thing that's a, a real value add is that there are hot links in the essay to thousands of pages on the websites that we've published out there. So it's a gateway or a doorway into all of these others. Beautiful. Uh, and I think it's profoundly important. And it lays a foundation in which to further explore all of this stuff from an integral lens, a comparative lens, strengths and weaknesses. <laughs>
I, I know the time, but how much time? I, I want to I open this to, to questions. I have eight minutes. <laughs> Okay, just carry on. Let's see what's next here. Let's, okay, we don't need, we can skip that. I just wanted to make, make a point here that I consider channeling of developmental intelligence, like Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences. Go ahead. And that's a way to study the channeling phenomenon, by the way, and do some real scientific research, modern and postmodern. No, I'm going to I'm going to stop here. I you know, I've got tons more I can talk about, but I want to open this to questions. I what I just to what I did not get through, I finish up Seth, and then there's a, an overview of integral conscious creation and integral theory, and luckily I've spared you that today. But this is available online on the New Worldview website in the introduction section under a New World Overview, and they're nice it's it's a dense essay, but they're in small paragraphs with hopefully making the point without too much belaboring the point. So I'm going to open it to questions at this point. And okay, I'll try and make this real short, but I, I had a comment concerning the multiple sources of information and the validity of those sources. And I absolutely, and I think everyone here probably agrees with that, this information doesn't belong to Seth any more than, you know, uh, uh, our property belongs to us, so to speak, in, in terms of the world. But, and I love the idea of the hierarchy of the, uh, at least within framework one and linear, linear terms, it absolutely shows the fit in and gives us a new paradigm to express the Seth material to emerging audiences, we could say, as, as a continuation or as a, a logical progression and, a, and an integration of this material in our evolution or our development. But the thing about the Seth material versus other sources of, um, uh, inner wisdom or whatever. The thing that I always liked about the Jane Roberts material was the incredible seven year period, which I never really got to appreciate until the early material was published. The incredible seven year period that Seth spent working out the distortions of language, intent, purpose, between his personality and Jane's to, inter to, to allow for the least amount of distortion. And that showed to me a, a devotion to the material of Jane, Rob, and Seth that I kind of hold as the benchmark when I look at other sources of information such as the ones you've Any mentioned other? here. Sure. Um, that was, I guess, my only comment. I just, that's one of the things I've always deeply respected was the amount of time spent on making sure that this has the least amount of distortion for this universal information. And if we add a developmental perspective to that energy exchange of Jane and Seth, there is a period of development. It's going, I believe it's going through stages that we can actually map to, to a certain degree. And so that it takes time for that distortion lens for the personality to step aside, to get comfortable, to socially socialize yourself as a public channeler and this is something we observe with people who come through New World View because we're a magnet for channelers who come in and, and they're doing things and they want to understand what's happening. And do they decide to go public or not? Ray. You alluded way back somewhere in there about channeling and proving it or science. Let me just think back. I'm always interested in this and I found a book. I'm into hard to find books. They took, uh, they did a double, some scientists somewhere did a double blind study of John Edward and a couple other people mm -hmm. and published it. And I, I found it, have it, and it was extremely interesting. Right. Anyway, were you uh, alluded that you were going to be part of maybe helping the scientific people accept channeling. Did I get that wrong? Or, or is that somewhere in your... Well, if you can get me $10 million <laughs> of funding, man, th they'll flock well, to you me. Do, do you I'll be happy to arrange the studies and and do it. No, I'm not connected right now to that, to funding sources. There are no funding sources well, for that work. Does anybody in, in the room That's not what my, um, my question is. Are, do you, on your, your, on your website, do you point to places? If, if Joe Scientist wants to... No, you know, that's the problem. <laughs> Scientists are still in their box. And they're in the closet with their Sethian beliefs. Professionally, they have to behave a certain way. They cannot cite it in their bibliographies. They can't. It's not in the paradigm. You're not allowed. You'll be laughed at. Your career will be ruined. I asked Ken Wilber 
uh, had the pleasure of spending three hours with him last year in Denver. What is your advice to a young Piaget who's interested in studying channeling? And what Ken said, he said, forget it. It will ruin your career. Don't do it. And that really deflated me. Not that I was intending to do it, but as, as what would this sage advice be that I could pass on to others in my network? Don't do it. This is from Ken Wilber. But that's the reality of where we are in 2006. There's so much, so much work to be done. Way to go. Helen. Yes. Um, I am really thrilled and impressed with the work you're trying to do here and that you've done and are continuing to do. Uh, it's quite um, dramatic trying to integrate. I am a rebel and I am still working on this notion of evolution and stages. I just can't always get my mind around it and something in the Wilbur material and some of this still seems very Western to me. That is, you got to go through these stages and I think more of the simultaneity and the, the developed me and the undeveloped me coexisting kind of thing. So can you just talk a little bit more about this requirement for stages? In a simple, short way. <laughs> uh, dealing with developmental hierarchy is a challenge at certain areas of postmodern worldviews. I'll put it that way. There's room for everything you, you, your rebel side is suggesting, but I think it's a, a mistake and a disaster. To th you're throwing out the baby with the bathwater to deny hierarchy in framework one terms. There's too much evidence for it in so many different ways. Elizabeth has a comment? Well, we yeah. have, okay. Oh. We had a comment okay. and a question it's related to that one. Okay. I don't know if yours is. Mine was way to the previous one. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I just wanted to say that we all need to start focusing on the fact that we can change the reality so that this stuff is, becomes part of the dialogue in a scientific community. I mean, this is up to us, right? This and is it's what doing it for. from within. My whole trip has always been, I'm doing this from within the system as best I can. Of course, I don't work for an institution any longer. Right now, we're not believing that this is acceptable. That's what we're stating. I believe it's acceptable. We have a comment and a question. Okay, this is in response to Helen. Um, if you see developmental stages as holarchy, and, and Ken and I differ on our definitions of holarchy, and also uh, Arthur Kustler. Um, if you see it, though, as individual larger and larger community, which you keep referring to, the self-family community, ecosystem, planet, cosmos, all the way up, then you will see that all of those are present in the most, what we call the most primitive culture. In other words, I would pit any Indian grandma I've met against Ken Wilbur up in the turquoise um, on that hierarchy. And I think that's what you're responding to, that it's a Western male developmental notion that I always bump up with, too. And every time I see Don Beck, I say, remember, Don, <laughs> that there are turquoise people in the tribes, right? So. That's true. The, this is one of the hardest things to, to come to terms with, with integral theory, and properly situating these levels. It's, it's one of the biggest. Well, always. Yeah, the, isn't that what happens with the, with the theorists? Yes. Yeah. Andy. Well, if we move towards the acceptance in framework one terms, as you are, uh, or where you are working on, I think most of the unacceptable stuff today came from a street level revolution. Alternative medicine, which is a very prominent subject now was driven by the patients and is driven very, I mean, into science and into the hospitals. So this is the way. Forget hierarchy, I mean, not forget, I understand, I'm with you, I, whatever you, however you uh, say which hierarchy and what, that's all, that's all out there. There's okay. a way to situate but these hierarchies. We have to generate important. it through, of course, think, um, thinking and believing in it, but this is a small group, my dears. We have, this has to be a mass movement and it might come in a total different form because the final outcome of the acceptance might be totally different to what we are thinking now. 
it might come in two or three years sure, sure. in a total different form. But I think it's very important, the work which you do, and inspire other people to think about it. Right. The acceptance of It's a grassroots thing. Strange, no? And change has always come from the bottom up. It's never a top-down imposed by a Maoist, Stalinist, American democracy system of doing things or way of doing things. It always comes from the bottom up, from within. Okay, we have three, three more lined up, Jim. Yes, uh, as to the scientific community accepting uh, things, um, the Science and Consciousness Conference that takes place now in Santa Fe and uh, was in Albuquerque, um, which I've attended several times. There's a lot of interesting discussions going on there. And I don't know that the word channeling is thrown out, but a lot of things that could be uh, considered comparable or uh, aspects of channeling like uh, uh, remote healing and um, uh, what were some of the other things? Oh yes, uh, remote viewing and things like this come up there. And uh, some time ago, I went to a conference in California from an uh, international conference on transpersonal psychology and uh, heard a couple of people there. In fact, they had a channeler there. And John Klimo, who wrote an interesting book on channeling, made a presentation there. And the name of his presentation is, uh, what does it mean I create my own reality? So in the large sense, I, I guess, in, in the dominant sense, I, I agree, but there's a lot of sparks out there. A couple more questions. Yeah, we've got two, two more. more lined up. <laughs> two more questions, and then I have a closing statement to make. I do want to echo the, the thank you for the work you're doing in the Chris uh, Network. The fact that all the information is available in transcripts is just awesome. I love picking up the notes here. I might mention one of his recent ones really talks about the tight family gathering of Chris, Seth, and Elias. So they really are tightly related. So I see that as a evolution. And along the lines of evolution, um, there's so much happening right now. It's exciting. David Corton's uh, new book, Come Out the Great Turning, is all tied in exactly this. We're moving from a dominator society, in an isolated term, into more of an integrative society, as I see it. Mm -hmm. My question has to do with the uh, dynamics of the, but I keep hearing a number of different sources. We're moving through an energy field that our radiation is going to be different for the next few years, which is going to facilitate are changing as human species. Do you know anything about that or can you explain that? No, but to me that's metaphorical imagery of, it's another way of trying to express an, intuit, an intuitive way of, of the shift, of this change, of this emerging post-modernity that we're just in the birth pangs of, big time, big okay. time. Last question. One more question. You had shared that world views build on each other and, and the fact is that Ken Wilber, it's just, I respect his work and it's just one opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to make a closing statement, and then we'll wrap it up. In summary, <clears throat> this is, I want to close with something that Seth said, and it's something that motivates me in my work. He says, and this is from Book 2, Session 82, the early sessions, this material will take its place in the conceptual and emotional life of Western civilization and finally will make its way throughout the world. New ideas are not accepted easily. When they take fire, however, they literally sweep through the universe. Joanne and I sincerely hope that our continuing efforts at New World View and Integral Conscious Creation will help to make this vision a reality. We invite you to join us and contribute in any way you can. Thank you.